In this video lecture, we're going to look at the control of respiration, primarily looking at the neural mechanisms and then the factors that influence breathing rates and depths. So the control at the local level is looking at changes primarily in partial pressures of CO2 in the tissue. So if, let's say, there's a rise in partial pressure of CO2, then those arterioles are going to dilate to bring in more blood to remove the CO2 and then in the process of course bring in oxygen. Then we've also seen that the, in the alveoli we have ventilation and lung perfusion match or coupled with each other. So in the lungs the blood is going to be directed to the alveoli with high partial pressures of oxygen um, and then there's, if there's a decline in, our, in CO2 levels then you're going to have the bronchioles constrict. So it's going to be matching perfusion and ventilation so that we can maximize the amount of gas exchange that's happening in those tissues in, or in the lungs. Now as far as control or neural control of respiration, this is a really kind of an unknown area. There's not a lot understood. There's a lot of places where that um, scientists don't understand what's going on. Um, they do know that there's these groups that are listed. Uh, there's the, in, in the medulla, there's the respiratory center. It's divided into a ventral respiratory group and a dorsal respiratory group. And then in the pons, there's a pontine respiratory group. And how these all interact exactly isn't understood very completely. So in the ventral respiratory group, they got a pretty good handle of that. That has inspiratory neurons and expiratory neurons. The inspiratory neurons fire for about two seconds, and that's what causes the diaphragm and external intercostals to contract. So therefore, you get inspiration. Then the, the expiratory neurons fire for about three seconds, and they inhibit the inspiratory neurons. So that's what stops the inspiratory neurons from firing. And so since there's no impulses now going to the diaphragm and external intercostals, they relax and therefore you exhale. And then it cycles back. Two seconds inspiratory neurons fire, three seconds expiratory neurons inhibit the inspiratory neurons, so now they, they, um, you get exhalation. Involved with that or influencing this ventral respiratory group is the dorsal respiratory group. Now the dorsal respiratory group is going to integrate information from peripheral stretch receptors and chemoreceptors and then communicate that information to the VRG to change the rate of breathing um, in response or to those chemoreceptors or stretch receptors. So they are, so this is kind of a fine-tuning adjustment. If there's low CO2 then it's going to be indicating to breathe more so increase the rate, that type of thing. Then the pontine respiratory group is also involved in this, and that's going to modify the VRG and the DRG when there's activities like vocalizations, sleep, and exercise. Now there's a lot of other factors that affect breathing rate. Primarily it's going to be CO2 levels that are affecting um, or increasing rate of breathing. So an increase in CO2 or which is also going to result in a decrease in oxygen. You can see here about positive effect on the breathing rate. Now higher centers of the brain like for that are going to influence speech, emotions, voluntary, voluntary control of breathing, those types of things, that's either going to be negative or positive impact on the respiratory rate depending if you're holding your breath obviously you stop breathing so that would be the negative. Um, those types of things though are going to affect when you inhale or exhale. There's also carotid bodies and in, in, and aortic bodies that have chemoreceptors and they're sensitive to decreases in oxygen um, and they're going to influence respiratory rate as well but it takes a big drop in oxygen to get these guys to really have an impact on breathing rates. Small changes in CO2 really mean a bigger change in breathing rate. There's also a herring brewer uh, reflex. This is the idea that if the when the lungs stretch um, to, to fill capacity these guys have a negative effect on breathing rates or on the respiratory centers and so therefore it would stop um, inhalation, it would inhibit inhalation because you don't want to inhale too far and basically cause damage the tissues by overextending those lungs. Uh, proprioceptors in the muscles and joints may be in sense uh, response to exercise or touch receptors, temperature pain receptors 
all those have an, a positive influence in causing the, in, um, a positive influence on those. And you can see here, it basically, again, it's the CO2 partial pressures that have the biggest influence. An increase in partial pressure of CO2 means a decrease in pH or directly input of partial pressure of CO2 through chemical uh, or excuse me, chemoreceptors in the periphery or central chemoreceptors in the medulla, those in cause these medullary respiratory centers to increase respiration and therefore increase ventilation and that restores the CO2 levels and the pH back to normal. So that ends our look at the respiratory centers um, and our control of breathing and the end of our respiratory system video lectures.